Hello students, the topic of today's module is bacterial photophosphorylation. Photosynthesis is a conversion of light energy into chemical energy that can be used in the formation of cellular material from carbon dioxide. Over half of the photosynthesis on earth is carried out by microorganisms. Prokaryotes that can convert light energy into chemical energy include the photosynthetic cyanobacteria, the purple and green bacteria, and the halobacteria, or archibacteria. The evolutionary roots of photophosphorylation probably lie in the anaerobic world between 3 billion and 1.5 billion years ago, when life was abundant in the absence of molecular oxygen. Photophosphorylation probably evolved relatively shortly after electron transport chains and anaerobic respiration began to provide metabolic diversity. Cyanobacteria, green sulfur bacteria, green non-sulfur bacteria, purple sulfur bacteria and purple non-sulfur bacteria are some of the bacteria that undergo photosynthesis. The cyanobacteria conduct photosynthesis similar to that in plants called oxygenic photosynthesis. The purple and green bacteria conduct bacterial photosynthesis or anoxygenic photosynthesis. Classification of photosynthetic bacteria. Photosynthetic bacteria are classified into two. One, anoxygenic photosynthetic bacteria and number two, oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria and oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria. And oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria consume carbon dioxide but do not release oxygen. These include green and purple bacteria, filamentous and oxygenic phototrophs or FABs, and phototropic heliobacteria. Purple bacteria produce sulfur particles inside their cells. They are found in either stagnant water or hot sulfuric springs. Instead of using water as a source of electrons, like in plants and cyanobacteria, purple sulfur bacteria use hydrogen sulfide as their reducing agent, and because of this, they give off sulfur rather than oxygen. Purple non-sulfur bacteria do not release sulfur because instead of using hydrogen sulfide as its reducing agent, they use hydrogen. Phototropic heliobacteria are found in soils and they use a particular type of bacterial chlorophyll which differentiates them from other types of photosynthetic bacteria. They are photoheterotrophs, that is, they cannot use carbon dioxide as their primary source of carbon. Green and red filamentous and oxygenic phototrophs or FABs use filaments to move around. The color depends on the type of bacterial chlorophyll the particular organism uses. This form of bacteria can either be photoautotropic, that is, they make their own energy through the sun's energy, or chemoorganotropic, which require a source of carbon, or photoheterotropic, that is, they don't use carbon dioxide for their carbon source. Now let's study the bacterial pigments. Photosynthetic pigments include the chlorophylls, carotenoids, phycoerythrin, and phycocyanin. From among these pigments, chlorophyll is the most important. Chlorophyll are large planar rings composed of four substituted pyrrole rings with a magnesium atom coordinated to the four central nitrogen atoms. Although several chlorophylls are found in eukaryotes, the most important are the chlorophyll A, and chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll A absorbs light with wavelengths of 430 nanometer in the blue range and 662 nanometer in the red range, whereas chlorophyll B absorbs light of 453 nanometer and 642 nanometer maximally. 
the chlorophylls of the purple and green bacteria called bacteriochlorophylls are chemically different than chlorophyll A in their substituent side chains. This is reflected in their light absorption spectra. Bacterial chlorophylls absorb from 800 to 1000 nanometer in the far red region of the spectrum. Carotenoids are long molecules, usually yellowish in color, and possess an extensive conjugated double bond system. Certain red algae and cyanobacteria possess another photosynthetic pigment known as phycobilly proteins, phycoerythrin and phycocyanin, which consists of a protein with a tetrapyrrole attached. Phycoerythrin is a red pigment with maximum absorption at around 550 nanometer, while phycocyanin is blue with maximum absorption at around 620 to 640 nanometer. This phycobilly proteins along with the chlorophylls are called the accessory pigments. Chlorophylls cannot absorb light energy effectively in the blue-green through yellow range, but accessory pigments do absorb light in this region and transfer the trapped energy to chlorophyll. Hence, they make photosynthesis more efficient over a broader range. Now let's study photophosphorylation in an oxygenic bacteria, that is green and purple bacteria. Early in the evolution of photophosphorylation, photosynthetic reactions evolved in anaerobic environments where there was very little molecular oxygen available. Two sets of reactions evolved under these conditions. These are light reactions because they require the activation of an electron, an excited electron, from the absorption of a photon of light by a reaction center pigment, such as bacteria chlorophyll. The light reactions are categorized either as cyclic or as non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Depending upon the final state of the electrons removed from the reaction center pigments. If the electron returns to the original pigment reaction center, such as bacteria chlorophyll, this is cyclic photophosphorylation. The electrons make a complete circuit. If the electrons are used to reduce NADP plus to NADPH, the electrons are removed from the pathway and end up on NADPH. This process is referred to as non-cyclic, since the electrons are no longer part of the circuit. In this case, the reaction center must be re-reduced before the process can happen again. Therefore, an external electron source is required for non-cyclic photophosphorylation. In these systems, reduced forms of sulfur, such as hydrogen sulfide, can be used as an electron donor instead of water, as in photosystem 2 in plants. The photosystems of purple bacteria and green bacteria have photosynthetic reaction centers P870 and P840 respectively. Purple and green bacteria possess only photosystem 1. Their photosynthetic reaction centers do not use water as an electron donor during non-cyclic photophosphorylation and thus cannot produce oxygen from water photosynthetically. And so, they are anoxygenic. Now let's come to cyclic photophosphorylation. In cycling photophosphorylation, the reduced bacterial chlorophyll molecule absorbs enough light energy to energize and eject an electron to form the oxidized bacterial chlorophyll. The electron reduces a carrier molecule in the reaction center, which in turn reduces a series of carriers via reduction oxidation reactions. These carriers are the same carriers found in respiration. If the change in the reduction potential from the various redox reactions are sufficiently large, protons can be translocated across a membrane. Eventually, the electron is used to reduce bacteria chlorophyll, completing a circuit, and the whole process can start again. And so, in cyclic photophosphorylation, the electrons make a complete cycle. Bacteria chlorophyll is the initial source of electrons 
and is also the final electron acceptor. The proton motive force generated across the bacterial membrane by proton translocation coupled to electron transfer is then harnessed by the bacterial ATP synthase to generate ATP. Here, in green bacteria, its reaction center, P840, absorbs light energy and becomes excited. The excited electron is released and used to reduce an iron sulfur protein, leaving an oxidized reaction center. The electron is transferred to a quinone, then to a series of cytochromes, which in turn reduces the P840 reaction center. The process is cyclical. The gray arrow coming from the iron sulfur protein to a ferridoxin represents an alternative pathway the electron can take and that is in non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So now let's come to non-cyclic photophosphorylation. In cyclic photophosphorylation, electrons cycle from bacteria chlorophyll to a series of electron carriers and eventually back to bacteria chlorophyll. There is theoretically no net loss of electrons and they stay in the system. In non-cyclic photophosphorylation, electrons are removed from the photosystem and the reduction oxidation chain and eventually end up on NADPH. That means there needs to be a source of electrons, a source that has a smaller reduction potential than bacterial chlorophyll that can donate electrons to the oxidized bacterial chlorophyll to reduce it. In this case, electrons flow from energized bacterial chlorophyll to NADP+, forming NADPH and oxidized bacterial chlorophyll. Electrons are lost from the system and end up on NADPH. To complete the circuit and the lost electrons are replenished by an external electron donor such as hydrogen sulfide or elemental sulfur, thus converting the oxidized bacterial chlorophyll back to its reduced state, ready to be energized again. In this example, the P840 reaction center of green bacteria absorbs light energy and becomes energized. The emitted electron reduces an iron sulfur protein and in turn reduces ferridoxin. Reduced ferridoxin can now reduce NADP plus to form NADPH. The electrons are now removed from the system, finding their way to NADPH. The electrons are replaced on P840 by hydrogen sulfide, which serves as the electron donor. Now let's come to oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria. Oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria carry out photosynthesis in a similar process as plants do. The only form of oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria is the cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are mostly found in water but can survive on land, in rocks and even in animal shells and in coral. They are also known to be endosymbiont, that is, they can live within the cells or body of another organism in a mutually beneficial way. The process of photophosphorylation in cyanobacteria is the same as that in vascular plants. It is of two types, non-cyclic photophosphorylation, wherein two photosystems are involved, PS2 or P680 and PS1 or P700, and cyclic photophosphorylation where only PS1 is involved. We will not go in detail about this type of photophosphorylation here as it is being elaborately discussed in a separate module. So we have come to the end of today's module. Photosynthesis in plants, algae, and cyanobacteria is similar to bacterial photosynthesis in the requirement for photosystems to capture light energy and convert them to chemical energy in the form of ATP, but different with respect to the source of electron donors and end products of photosynthesis. In cyanobacteria, algae and plants, two photosystems one and two are involved, absorption of light leads to splitting of water 
to generate high energy electrons and protons and molecular oxygen is evolved. The electrons are transported by electron carriers in the electron transport chain and ultimately to NADP plus to generate NADPH and a proton motive force. Or they take a cyclic path involving only PS1 where the electron transfer is coupled to proton translocation. So only ATP is produced with no concomitant production of NADPH. On the other hand, purple and green bacteria possess only photosystem 1. Their photosynthetic reaction centers do not use water and thus cannot produce oxygen from water photosynthetically and so they are anoxygenic. In cyclic photophosphorylation, the electrons ejected from the reaction center bacterial chlorophyll upon absorption of light energy is transferred through electron carriers in the electron transport chain. Its energy is used to translocate protons across the membrane and then finally accepted again by the bacterial chlorophyll. In non-cyclic photophosphorylation, electrons are removed from the photosystem, transported through the electron transport chain and eventually end up on NADPH. So, in bacterial photophosphorylation systems, it is either the formation of NADPH or ATP generation, but not both concomitantly. That's all for today. Thank you.